As I mentioned at the end of our last <coughs> lecture, this position is one of the most important positions in um, the whole opening theory of today, and certainly thus one of the main positions in Petrov as well. So <coughs> if we take a close look at it, we see that White's advantage in the center is as serious as before. But maybe it is not quite as easy to exploit it as against the bishop e6 system because bishop from f5 controls a number of squares which are very important for black, especially the square b1, which is vi vital for white's rook. Now the thing is that probably it used to be considered that bishop f5 is inferior because after let's say c takes d5, queen takes d5, white could win some time attacking the queen in the center, but it was later discovered that in fact attacks like c4 in this position after let's say queen d7 followed by bishop f6 rather weaken white center than anything else and uh, white started to look for different ways and there are many ways leading to different sorts of struggle and we'll just uh, take a look at lines in some detail trying to see what they're all about for instance rook e1 is normal normal developing move and black usually replies with rook e8 just de just developing pieces and here after let's say bishop f4 continuing normally d takes c4 bishop c4 bishop d6 rook e8 queen e8 the position which was popular some time ago knight g5 bishop g6 bishop takes d6 c takes d6 h4 White has some initiative on the king side. h5 is threatened and the pieces are attacking f7. The queen is joining on f3. And whilst during the first games Black had some difficulties, uh, later it was still proven that in fact too many pieces have been exchanged and after queen e7 followed by h6 and rook e8, in fact black doesn't have any major problems, it's just white doesn't have enough material to attack and in the long run, as the c file is open now, we can see that c3 and a3 pawns could actually become exposed. So this basically direction is not very dangerous for black and the other line became more crucial, uh, the line after c takes d5 queen d5 and bishop f4 or in fact after rook e1 rook e8 c takes d5 queen takes d5 bishop f4 so in this position white is attacking the c7 pawn immediately and although it is not so so much of a problem still black has to uh, find uh, some ways to deal with it he either has to play queen d7 or bishop d6 or maybe rook a c8 and all these moves they have some slight problem of of their own uh, for instance after queen d7 white immediately gets the chance to expand his center with d5 followed by c4 and then knight e5 and as we saw in my game against Adams this can be pretty unpleasant after bishop d6 c4 queen e4 if queen goes to a5 then bishop d2 is pretty serious queen e4, bishop e3. White is also probably a bit better because the queen on e4 
will be losing time when attacked by knight d2 or knight g5 and white's white central pawns they are strong and well protected at the moment and it seems that that white is doing better and after uh, a lot of search from white and black players black started to go for rook ac8 and this uh, became the tabia of uh, modern petrov defense and lots of moves were tried here uh, so many that uh, on this position alone we can pro probably learn almost every idea which exists in the main line of Petrov. Uh, first of all people tried to apply some waiting strategy like h3. And Black can also wait in return with h6 and uh, not much has changed or as was uh, proven in uh, very important games for this line Leko Kramnik in the World Championship match or Leko Anand from the World Championship in San Luis Bishop E4 exerting quite some pressure on F3 and G2 is a worthy alternative the importance of this move is also that it liberates the square F5 for the Queen as we know this diagonal is fairly important and is important to control squares like b1 and d3 and so on other moves have been tried like the move knight d2 for instance is an important alternative as we mentioned the square e3 for the knight is an important location and now the idea is to play either knight f1 knight e3 or knight c4 knight e3 and you see it is sort of slow positional chess there are no tactical shots uh, to show you there are no kingside attacks massive structural developments <clears throat> it is just that white and black tries to place his pieces harmoniously tries to succeed in getting the central control and so on just basically very decent positional chess and it seems so far that uh, black and white are uh, basically in, uh, in something of an equilibrium uh, although in practice both black and white were winning uh, some games because uh, this equilibrium is not as stable as we saw white gains some advantage when his central pawns start moving and consequently black might get an advantage if he manages to block this pawns uh, in the long run other options would be for instance queen a4 with an idea to play bishop c4 to uh, attack the king but basically after queen a4 even the moves like queen a5 come into consideration because basically the exchanges are pre pretty good for black the other options would be like c4 queen e4 bishop e3 and then queen c2 again exchanging the queens and uh, getting a pretty decent ending uh, for black where not much is happening so basically you see lots of things have been tried in the main line there was uh, no advantage found and uh, in last years white was mainly concentrating his efforts on bishop d3 however this exchanges yet another piece and uh, after some queen d7 just queen returns so as not to get uh, kicked by c4 and d5 let's say rook b1 bishop d3 queen d3 b6 black was actually uh, holding this uh, position fairly comfortably amongst players who use this uh, with black to great effect there were players like Gelfand on, uh, and Anand and if you check the database uh, the mega base you will find a lot of games and it seems that uh, in this position black is able to hold to hold the balance and this is certainly a great encouragement for people who want to try uh, the better of defense with black and uh, now that's it for now and in our next lecture we'll try to see 
if there are any ways for white to avoid this very main line where despite the richness of play the fact that it has been played for so many times already and the fact that black is holding the balance here uh, maybe he just wants to uh, to find something uh, less popular and maybe practically more promising.